Actually, a lot of these talks seem to come out of uh, meetings I have with other people where it turned out I misunderstood something. So I thought I would uh, put this together for you and that way you won't be as confused as I was or make a mistake in a meeting. So this is really about Amazon AWS relationships between EC2 instances, the enhanced load balancers and the auto scale groups, right? So some, I call these auto scaling groups or application scaling groups, but we're gonna call them ASG for the rest of the time really comes about how they're put together and which component knows about which. So first on the auto scaling group itself, the auto scaling group manages instances. Its job is to make sure that the pool size is the size you requested and that the pool is distributed across the availability zones that you want it to. So I've seen a couple pre, um, design documents from other people where they basically put all their nodes in one zone so they don't have to pay the inter, uh, inter availability zone cost. In our case where I work, we actually make sure that every instance goes in a different availability zone until we run out of zones, and then we'll double up, right? But the main idea in our case is we set up an auto scale group. It pools, actually in our case, we create an auto scale group. We tell it what size we want. It then goes and installs all the machines for us. And we do this through cloud formation templates. And then if any of those nodes need to be terminated or terminate by accident, the auto scale group will make sure that they come back. So this is kind of the standard deployment model. You can ignore the load balancer here. Um, I really wanted to just talk about the EC2 instances themselves and the auto scale group. So the orange uh, squares represent EC2 instances in their diagrams. I actually got these images from the Amazon PowerPoint template. And then the orange boxes represent the availability zones and the white box represents the auto scale group managing those instances across the zone. So the ELB itself knows about target instances. It knows what port and IP address or what port and machine it's forwarding to, but it doesn't know how they're provisioned and it doesn't know how they're related. You could actually, would be a bad idea, but you could actually put different apps behind the same ELB, it would have no idea what's happening. So the auto scale group actually knows about the ELB and when a new instance is created, it registers it with the ELB. When a new instance is, when an instance is destroyed, it actually removes it from the ELB. So if you were to auto scale up or you were to change your minimum number from one to N, five or whatever it is, those nodes would all come online. The deployment profile would go and create those nodes. It'd be uh, forced by the auto scale group and the auto scale group would those re register those with the ELB. So the point here really is the ELB doesn't know anything about auto scale groups. It just knows about instances. The auto scale knows how to create and destroy instances and it knows where to register. So that's pretty much what I said here too. The ELB distributes traffic across EC2 instances. It doesn't do it across zones, really. It just does it across the instance pool, although you have some little tweaks you can do there. The application or auto scaling group creates the instances. It distributes them across the zone and it registers them with the ELB. The ELB does not know anything about the auto scale group for any real intents and purposes. So if you want to see how this is, you can see an elastic load balancer here. We can see that it kind of knows about availability zones that it's allowed to use. It also knows that cross zone is allowed across those zones and it sets up a listener um, on a port, and then we basically register instances other than that listener. You'll notice there is no auto scale group in this configuration. So if this is a web server group, this really represents an auto scale group. I pulled these two samples from the auto scale example from um, Amazon's uh, like tutorial guides. There's a URL in the last slide that shows you this. So this web server group is actually an auto scale group, right? You can see here it's an auto scaling, auto scaling group. <laughs> kind of redundant, but not really. Um, it's going to figure out what availability zones and we're going to set a pool size and then there's a bunch of launch <coughs> launch or uh, launcher and other <laughs> configuration that stuff will get plugged in and it'll tell it how to start the instances and what code to run so you can see here the auto scale group itself um, knows the load balancers he's going to be plugged into it could be more than one we do this in a couple cases we might plug the same instances to um, maybe an internal and an external load balancer or something else but the notion here is this partitioning. So this web server group really, uh, auto scale group is really these nodes here. I should have left the orange boxes in uh, dotted line boxes to represent the um, different AZs, but I didn't. So EC2 names, I really wanted to just cover this real quick. So in the example they have, they don't use, uh, to make the name a mandatory field, I really don't know why. So you'll notice if you just provision nodes, the name column in the console will be empty. A lot of places use the name field to represent the, all the instances that make up an auto scale group. So like where I work now, every time an auto scale group creates an instance, we register that instance under a DNS name that's the same as 
basically the same, <coughs> the, the root part of that name is the same as the name for the EC2 instances. But the name field is just a tag, and I'll show you how that works probably in another video. It's a convention, so basically the idea is all the instances that represent the same component usually have the same name, but it does not define instance relationships inside of AWS. You actually could give instances that are not related to each other the same name. Some people do, will put, make it a department name or some other crazy thing. In our case, where I work or what I like to do is make sure that all the related nodes have the same name. They sort really nicely and then you kind of know what's going on. Um, ASGs create instances with the same name if you tell it to, but they create different instance IDs, right? So the instances each have their own instance IDs, but they could have the same name. Um, the ELB is a proxy for a pool of instances. Um, those instances could actually have different names. You might decide that your Western region instances have West in the name, and you might decide your Eastern region instances have East in the name, but otherwise the names might be very similar. The proxy or the ELB doesn't actually care. It just targets a set of instances. So I wanted to show this. <clears throat> if you go to the um, Amazon tutorial where they walk you through a quick example, like I said, it'll be the URL on the last slide. You can see here uh, kind of the relationship. So in this case, we have a situation where we have a web server auto scaling group. That auto scaling group has actually got a launch config that runs the servers and goes and installs all the software. And then that auto scaling group is actually plugged into the load balancer. So we have a load balancer. Whenever the auto scale has to launch new instances of the launch config, it goes and plug those into the load balancer like we talked about. The other thing here, <coughs> sorry, uh, too much snacks at the Super Bowl party, I guess. It has some other things. It has the alert set up. So if we go above or below certain CPU thresholds, it'll actually um, cause an alarm and it'll also potentially auto scale up or auto scale down. So, hey, if the CPUs are all running hot, we're going to add another node. And if it's not, we're going to, um, if it's running very low, we're going to bring down nodes. But I just wanted to show this relationship. So if you use the uh, any of the uh, CloudFormation templates, you'll see that you uh, you can go to this designer mode after you've loaded the template or you can design in the designer mode. I personally think the designer load is horrible, but it's great for something like this where you build a config and then you kind of want to look at it. So I um, used it for this. So where did I find the icons for this that have all the pretty PowerPoint? So uh, symbols, you know, the right symbols. I actually got this from the Amazon AWS website. Um, the auto scaling cloud formation template actually came from this URL. I really like it. It gives you kind of an example. I kind of wish they had set the name temp name field and there's some other things they could have named some of the things a little better but you know um, a lot of times you'll write a demo and you don't have to explain it to somebody in person so you kind of or you have some other purpose in it and so you kind of stick with the names you got um, the other thing which i was going to show is uh we have a in our case um well you know what i'll do it in another demo when i demo the console uh, we have a couple chrome extensions that we use um, that were built by people on uh, teams i've worked with that basically will help you uh, know kind of what your environment is and that kind of thing so that's all I got. This is really, hey, how do load balancers, auto scale groups, and EC2 instances relate to our, each other? Thanks.